One, go, no, five for me. I'm looking for five. <laughs> I'm looking for five. I want them all. Look. Uh-huh. So you got enough crowns to go around. I'm looking. <clears throat> this is um, in the, in the uh, scheme of things in terms of the calendar. The last Sunday in the 2022 and uh, two years ago, um, we said, Lord, I want to believe you for a certain thing every Sunday morning. And this is the 104th Sunday that we, the Lord has blessed us to do what I asked him to help me do. Every Sunday morning for 104 four Sunday mornings straight and the times I were not here to put it in the offering I zelled it to word of outreach account so I'm thanking the Lord for that um, for the experience when you were down to where is it it showed up in time So, <clears throat> I was sharing with someone the other day that if we uh, wait on the Lord and if we are patient, wait on him and be patient, he will do exactly what he said he would do in our experience. Just what he said. Now, what God said in the scriptures, he said it to a lot of different people. And we have to get in on some of the conversation. And we used to say when I was growing up in church life, what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray. And be who? And be thankful. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that part. <laughs> but... <clears throat> The Lord will do, and that's my testimony, some of it. Um, of course, Sister Smith and I are going on 42 years, and, and we benefited from one another's lives. And um, Pastor Brown said he has to put, you know, close one eye, open one eye, one ear closed, open, the other ear open, one lip. But I learned I have to close both eyes and put sunglasses on. <laughs> you see, the scripture says, whoever give up father, mother, brother, sister, wives, houses, and land. For Christ's sake and the gospel shall receive what? A hundredfold in this life. With what? With persecution. <laughs> now, I've given up houses, land, relatives, etc. And but God gave me so much more of in one woman and until I say, well, the blessings of the Lord has overtaken me. And you know, a lot of times people don't know what to do with the blessings of the Lord. Because they're supposed to make rich and add no sour, right? But we got to be mature enough to handle the blessings of the Lord. The Israelites were not mature enough to do it. He said, I'm going to take you into a land with trees you didn't plant, houses you didn't build, and you're going to inhabit the labor of those people that I put out. And so the Israelites got in there, but they were told, don't forget the Lord when you get there now. And what did they do? They forgot. They didn't know how to handle the blessings of the Lord. 
And we have to really learn how to handle the increase. Let me say that one more again. We have to learn how to handle the increase, otherwise the increase will take us out. I remember about 16 or so years ago, uh, almost this time of the year, actually it was in the January, and it was really, really cold outside. And we had to move out of 2505. It was cold outside. It took about 20 people to move our stuff out. We had to move it out in one day. And of course, we were brokenhearted over it and everything. <clears throat> and um, this is something that may help somebody else. But when the Lord promises that whoever give up mother, father, brother, sister, houses, and land for Christ's sake and the gospel shall receive a hundredfold with persecution, sometimes we don't realize that we have to go through a process to learn a lesson in order to get the blessing of his word being fulfilled in our experience. And, um, and that's with relationships, whether it's marriage or business associates or whatever the case may be. And then it can be with property. Not everybody can handle property. Not everybody can handle an automobile. Not everyone can handle a home. So therefore, God wants to do something about that, but he has to send us through a process to prepare us so that when the blessing overtake us, we won't miss the purpose. We won't miss that purpose. So I was thinking about how the Lord blessed us to get the house back about 16 years later. And we needed $20,000 to hold on to it and couldn't get it. But then we needed $100,000 to get it back. And God blessed us with it. I mean... I must, I've been thinking about this. Been really thinking about it. But with that comes responsibility. And the responsibility requires faith. And if we don't have faith for the responsibility, we ought not be begging God for something that we don't have faith for. And we don't have grace to maintain. You hear me say it often that it takes faith to obtain, but grace to maintain. You can buy a $25 million home like some athletes do, but then they end up in bankruptcy after making all those millions of dollars because they were never processed. You, know, you got a Michael Jordan right now paying all kind of money because nobody would buy the house that he has up for sale. It's been up for sale for years. I've got what he wants for it. I think it's well over 30 million. But nobody wants it. It's the waste of money. And God bless him with a, a, a good mother. I read the book that his mother wrote, I saw it when I was in South Africa. I was in a bookstore. And I picked it up. It was Michael Jordan's mother wrote this book. I said, no wonder Michael Jordan is doing so well. Because his mother prayed for him so earnestly. And his father was ruining him. And then somebody murdered him. His father. Because his father was getting him into the gambling mode and all this kind of stuff. It, 
we got to really know how to appreciate those that God put in our lives, put us in the process, and bring us on out. If we don't appreciate them, we're going to end up big time losers. So he didn't treat his wife right, and so the divorce cost him a big, big, big time amount. You know, I, 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 I read about these people who, Michael Jordan know about the Lord. His mother taught him. And I think you remember the testimony I gave some years ago that <clears throat> I was discipling a brother whose parents was an executive of Pepsi-Cola. And Pepsi-Cola sponsored a celebrity basketball game with Michael Jordan, Michael Finley, and some others. And so I was able to go to that game and uh, sit near the court. And um, after the game, they had they're going to have a party. Michael Jordan's going to have a party, and his friend's going to be there. And so the sponsor, uh, I was discipling his son, and the sponsor didn't want to go to the party, so he gave us the tickets to go to the party in their place. So we went to the party, and everybody in there backing it up, and can on, and standing in line to get autographs. And then Michael Jordan got tired of giving autographs. He said, I'm not giving him more autographs. And then one of the sponsors brought a lady up to the table with a jersey. And he cussed him out. Blah, 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 blah. I said, I'm not giving him more autographs. And he had this big cigar in his hand. And some people sitting at the table with him. So... He had some bodyguards, and I told one bodyguard, I said, I got a message with Michael. So we had to talk to that man over there. So I went over there and talked to that man. I said, I got a message for Michael. He looked at me. He said, well, there he is right there. So I went over there at his table and leaned over the table. And he looked at me. I said, Michael, Jesus loves you. And he looked at me, and he reared back on two legs of his chair. He said, thank you. Then the chair came back down. He got up, and he left out the same time we left out. We, we are in a process, and the Lord has given us some good experiences and we need to take advantage of all the relationships that God gives us. Every place he has us, no matter how difficult and how disappointing, you might be in the Heartbreak Hotel. But God wants to do something to bring us somewhere he has in mind for us. And he wants to live his life out in us. So I'm saying, Lord, thank you for those 54 weeks straight. Thank you for taking us through that and learning how to trust you for that. In addition to the other needs being met throughout the year. That was a whole lot more than just the 104. And so the Lord is increasing his people. And we want to be on the increase, but we've got to take responsibility. We've got to be accountable. We say, Lord, whatever it takes to get me where you want me, I yield to what you want to do and how you want to do it. If you're hurting, say, Lord, when you finish with me, I'm going to come forth just like pure gold. Amen. Stay in the process. Don't run away. Don't try to wiggle out. You know the Lord, he's been dealing with us. Say, Lord, what it is it? What is it? And I was going to put something on, on 
Facebook today, still will, just waiting for my editor to, to get back with me. And uh, But I said the ultimate violation of a human right is in the arresting of a person for praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The consequences for violators are the destruction of their families and the trumpet judgments upon the earth and the people. And then I put in here the scripture references. In the disruption of horizontal activities of all kinds, God seems at times silent. But disrupti disrupting the vertical connection between heaven and earth is ugly. Now, people are going to have to read that and think about it. The most important thing we can be doing on this planet is praying. Nothing and nobody is more important than praying. God even himself, according to Psalm number 50, verse 21. Let's read that real quick. Psalm 50. Verse 21, it reads, These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. A lot of things are going on in our lives horizontally and God seemed to be silent in the process and what's going on in our lives and sometimes we don't know how to respond to what's going on in our lives but when it comes to the vertical now the horizontal is all kinds of things going on. But the vertical is when we pray and hook heaven and earth up together. And if anybody come in between heaven and earth by disrupting people who are praying, I said, that's ugly. And the perpetrators or the disruptors, according to Daniel, look at that, chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. Pull right in there at verse 24. Daniel 6, 24. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them their children and their wives and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Do you not know this one man praying three times a day? Now when that happened the Babylonian Empire had already been overthrown. Nebuchadnezzar was dead. His grandson had been ruling. And he was found wanting with the handwriting on the wall. And the Medes and the Persians came in and overthrew the Babylonian Empire. And when all the dust settled, Daniel was still standing. 
So he had gone through all 70 years of captivity under the Babylonian Empire. And then when Babylon got overthrown, Daniel's still standing when the next empire comes in. And he shot to the top. And he became the chief of all the presidents. As a matter of fact, he was running the new kingdom just like he ran Babylon. Because he was a praying man. But then you read this story, you find that all the other presidents, all the other captains, all the other governors throughout the whole 70 provinces of the Medo Persian Empire, all their leaders got together and had a convention over one man and say, We don't like him and we can't find a thing wrong with him other than the fact that there's something we got to do about him and his God. He's excellent in spirit. He's good in his administration. He's doing real. We can't fault him anywhere, but something we got to do about his prayer life. So they went to the king and said, we had a convention. And we concluded that nobody asked anybody anything for 30 days but you. And if they ask anybody for anything but you for 30 straight days, then they go to the lion's den. And the king, you know, he didn't know that they were appealing to his pride. So he signed the decree that could not be changed. And when, get this, the scripture says when Daniel knew that the decree was signed, when they say, you all don't meet, you shut it down, social distance, get your shots, wear your mask. When he knew that the decree was signed, he went right back to his prayer room, opened the window. And prayed like he did before. Glory to God. And the leaders got together and they were listening to him pray. We got him now. We got him. Boy, they went to the king. This is it, king. You can't change your mind. This man was asking his God for something he should have been asking you for. In other words, he's been telling this God to, to, to uh, inoculate and, and, and give, 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 uh, uh, give what's needed in this body instead of asking the government. Instead of asking WHO, CDC. They came asking you, Lord. We sure did. And the king was sad. He knew he'd been had. All his leaders, the whole kingdom, said, put Daniel in the lion's den. You know what? The king didn't go to sleep that night. No music, nothing. He fasted through the night and he prayed. But he told Daniel as he was going, he said, Daniel, I know your God is able to deliver you. You see that? All you got to do is make a stand for the Lord in prayer. And the people that were against you didn't mean to be against you, but they got had. Thank you, mother. Politics. They didn't want to lose their job. So the next morning, the king goes to the, to the den. And this is the way he said, oh, Daniel. Was your God able? And Daniel said, hey, king, live forever. No harm done. God sent an angel and shut the mouths of the lions. The king got the weak. Get him up out of there. And you know what? He, the king lost all of his leadership over the whole kingdom. He lost everybody in one day. He said put them all in prison because they can't go to the lion's den all at once. Because they got to go. The children got to go. Their wives got to go. I'm killing them all. It's going to take some time. These lions are going to get tired. They need breaks. Don't mess with praying folks. 
it gets horizontally, you can mess with a whole lot. And the Lord may not say anything because he's taking us through a process. But once you get your knees on the floor, that's it. Once you hit your knees on the floor, that's it. Anybody mess with that? That's ugly. That's ugly. I think I have one more scripture. Look at Revelation 8. Pull in that verse 4. Revelation 8. Look at verse 4 and verse 6. Revelation 8, 4 says, And the smoke of the incense, which come, get this, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. You know what? It's going to change this whole scheme of, of things that are, that are going on in the world, the prayers of the saints. The deal is going to go down so tough until the saints won't do anything but pray. They're going to be seriously, we're going to be seriously praying. And the angels are going to get involved with our prayers. Mm -hmm. Make sure they, they, they reach all the way to the presence of God. No principalities, no powers, no Satan, no dragon, nothing can stop those prayers. And those prayers of the saints are going to introduce the seven trumpets. Those are seven trumpets of judgment. And out of those seven trumpets, the last three are introduced with woe. Woe. That's when depopulation is going to happen. Billions of people are going to die in about a year's and a month's time. But it's going to be the prayers of the saints. Don't mess with praying, folks. You can cuss the preacher out on the corners preaching, or you can go and burn up his printing press that's trying to publish. You can do all that kind of stuff. But don't mess with him when you start praying. God don't like ugly. And he does something about it. So we want to encourage all of us that to make prayer your main business. Every time you come in those doors right in here, look up and read that sign. It says what? The main, all the overcomers through prayer is the main business of their lives. Christ and the overcomers. That's the main business. Nothing else is more important than prayer. Nobody and nothing. When you go vertical, that's it. It doesn't get any better than that. And Paul, in conclusion, says that he cannot conclude that he's already attained the thing that he's going after. But this one thing he's doing, he's forgetting what's behind him, and he's reaching forth for that which is before him. And he's pressing toward the mark for the prize of the what? High calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? Intercession. For he ever lives to make intercession for those who come who, to God by him. And when we enter into the ministry of prayer, intercession, and supplication, we are on the highest order of activity. When we hit our knees, things happen. That's why, get this, I tell folk, look, We've seen a lot of people come and go. A lot of people have died in the last 40 some years. We watched them come and go. And one apostle called me last night. He calls me two or three times a year. He called me last night and he said, you really sound good. You sound strong. He said that I was in the bed. Trying to sleep. And God wants us to be strong even when we're sleeping. He wants us to dream good dreams. Have good visions. And serve the purpose of God. And it starts on these. 
That's where it starts. And that's where it's going to finish up too. Because he's coming. And we're praying, even so, Lord, come on. Come on. We're going to be more freer in 2023. -er. Let's stand in the name of Jesus.